also, are we really rethinking the system? Are we beginning to question some of those who got us into the mess? I think you have in the White House a very, very competent team, headed, of course, by President Obama. But what you have in the United States is a system which makes it difficult to leave. One of the dangers I think we have to guard against is that because we're focusing so much on the financial crisis, we're not looking at some of the other ones. If you think again back to 2007, when you think of how rapidly American and, and, and British bank, British governments um, in particular responded, and virtually nationalized the banking system overnight, um, something that would have seemed unthinkable and would have taken uh, months, years, decades of discussion and, and probably very little would have happened. I think there have also been moments of great crisis in history when we've been forced to look at the way in which we do things and we, we have sometimes, not always, but we have sometimes come up, come up with better ways of doing them. The First World War brought an attempt, not always successful, but a very noble, I think, and heroic attempt to create a different sort of international order, to create an international order in which there were international institutions, of course the League of Nations above all others, that would help to provide a forum and a way for nations to settle their disputes short of resorting to war, which would help to work collectively encourage nations to work collectively to do such things as lowering, lowering trade barriers to increase the prosperity of all rather than trying to protect the prosperity of some. Now we see that attempt at the end of the First World War as a failure because there was another war and, and, a, and a dreadful war in 1939, but I think we shouldn't see it entirely as a failure. The attempts made at the end of the First World War were in fact going to bear fruit at the end of the Second World War. And we had collectively learned something both from the attempts and from their failure about how to try and avoid wars and how to deal, try and deal with, with common issues and common problems. I think what also tends to bring change is when there is real pressure for change. And I think it comes from two sources. You can probably think of others, but certainly two sources. I think in democracies, of course, it has to come from the public. There has to be a general acceptance or a willingness or an understanding that there should be change. But it also has to come from political elites. I think we, we have to always be aware of the role of leadership in that, in this. And this, it seems to be, is one of the, the worrying problems in the United States today. Um, I think there are um, political elites who are capable of leading, and there are, um, I think you have in the White House, a very, very competent team, headed, of course, by President Obama. But what you have in the United States is a system which makes it difficult to lead. One of the dangers I think we have to guard against is that because we're focusing so much on the financial crisis, we're not looking at some of the other ones that are there as well. And again, it's, it's I think, human nature. We can only be worried about so many things at once. The trouble is we need to be worried about several things at once at the moment. And these things may be separate, but they're also related. So before I talk about some of the financial challenges facing us and some of the questions posed by the events of the last three years, let me just mention three other areas which I think are, are really of great concern to us. There's the whole social issue. And one of the things that the financial crisis helped to cast into very high relief was the growing gap between the very rich and the very poor in most Western societies, not all, but certainly in, in, in a good many Western societies. And this, I think, is very, very worrying. It's worrying for social stability. It's worrying for social cohesion. It's worrying when you get too many people at the bottom edge of society who feel that they have no hope and their children have no hope. And there have been some, I think, very worrying polls in the United States recently where people who normally, I mean, you always think of the United States as the country where people say, look, you know, I have opportunities, my children will have opportunities, that's what we do in the United States. And I think what you're increasingly get, getting showing up in the polls and in the anecdotal evidence is people saying we don't have any hope. Increasingly, I, I find it, um, what's happening with the environmental issues is either people are saying, what can I do, which is a very, again, natural but not very helpful, response, or people are saying, I don't believe in it. Um, and I find this a curious formulation. I was, I was at a dinner party, and someone said, I don't believe in global warming. And I said, well, it doesn't seem to me it's a matter of faith. It's not like believing in God or not believing in God. Um, it's something to be discussed. It's an issue, but it's not something that you, 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 you take a position on. You don't say, I'm a global warming believer, I'm a true believer, or I'm a global warming not believer. I mean, it just seems to me a very curious formulation, and it seems to me trying to make something that should be a matter of rational thought into a matter of simple a credo. Um, I'm not going to believe in it, don't believe in it, won't believe in it, won't listen to anything, because it's a matter of faith, and, and this, this worries me. As the United States declines in power, I think it will be a rather perilous situation for the world. It will be difficult because there will be pressures in the United States to try and avert that decline 
try and show that the United States still is a major military power. The other problem, and it will be a problem collectively for the world, is that the United States will decide it no longer wants to bear the burden of being the world's policeman, being the world's uh, monitor, um, trying to keep the whole system afloat, and that there will be rising pressure of isolationism. So are we really rethinking the system? Are we beginning to question some of those who got us into the mess? Um, it seems to me that there is some questioning now of economists and their capacity to um, predict the ways in which systems will work. Um, there's also a challenge to the conservative view that the free market will solve all. Um, and I think we're recognizing that there is a need for regulation, there is a need for supervision. Um, you can often tell a lot about jokes, and I will tell you my one joke, and this is a light bulb joke about economists, um, which I just heard. How many economists does it take to change a light bulb? An infinite number, because they all sit there in the dark and wait for, you, wait for the invisible hand to do it. LAUGHTER